My name is Daniel Morales and I'm a graduate student in creative writing at the University of New Orleans. I'd like to show you how the BP oil spill affected Louisiana and how some volunteers have responded. Louisiana is on the Gulf of Mexico, but New Orleans is about 100 miles upriver from the Gulf. If you drive three hours south of New Orleans, you can get to Grand Isle, which is a barrier island in the Gulf of Mexico. You drive through swamp, sugar cane, bayous, and wetlands. Welcome to Grand Isle, Louisiana. About 1,500 people live on Grand Isle, but the population expands in the summer. Grand Isle is famous for seafood, which goes into po' boy sandwiches and gumbos. It's also famous for Grand Isle State Park, which was hit hard by the oil spill. It was really bad. I mean, it was. It affected everyone a lot. But you know, we're not busy all day. It's really not the same. Of course, you know we were. We were shocked and we were worried about how bad the situation would get, how much oil would be coming on the beach, and how much damage would be done. And uh, I tried to follow the course of it on a daily basis and uh, try to, like I said, record as much as possible of what was going on, which was extremely difficult because we were denied access to many, many of the locations that I, I, I used to come to before the oil spill. Even four months after the oil spill, some of the beaches on Grand Isle are still closed. BP hired contractors to help clean up the sand, but volunteers came to help clean the animals. Hi, my name is Leanne Sarko. Um, I was the interpretive ranger at Grand Isle State Park for this past year and uh, the founder of the Hermit Crab Survival Project. There wasn't really any volunteer opportunities at the park and we started getting a lot of people coming down to Grand Isle who wanted to somehow help in the oil spill. But when I was walking down our shores and we had this huge oil slick, I started noticing these little things crawling up onto the shore and it was these little hermit crabs and they were getting stuck inside of the oil and um, starting to suffocate because the oil was getting inside of their shells. So that's when I decided that I would clean the hermit crabs and start the project. collected the hermit crabs from this area where we had um, sandbars exposed during low tide and about six inches of um, oil that had um, kind of congealed there and sat there for the past five months and the hermit crabs were crawling in it um, so that's where we collected them and cleaned them. Yeah my name is Fraser O'Hara I'm originally from Washington State but I went to school here in New Orleans and so when I heard about the oil spill I got in touch with my friend Leanne who's working down on Grand Isle State Park I didn't want to work for BP, but at the same time I wanted to be there on the front lines trying to help out. And uh, this is the visitor center. This is where we have um, an area where we had our lab where we would take the hermit crabs from the beach and uh, clean them. And uh, I think this is uh, in July when we had probably about 15 volunteers that day. We cleaned them with rags and um, with uh, Castile soap and we clean the inside of them with uh, Q-tips. And then we put them in tanks and let them walk around an oil absorbent material that kind of pulled the oil off their legs. And then uh, we waited for about 24 to 72 hours and then we released them into the wild. You said there's a lot to do in very little time, is that what you said? Yes. What can I do? Clean crabs. Okay. <laughs> Toothbrush. Grand Isle and the Gulf Coast are still feeling the impact of the oil spill, but thanks to Leanne and 200 volunteers, over 8,000 hermit crabs were safely relocated. There's still work that needs to be done, but this is an example of how some of the volunteers have responded.